In this screencast, I'm going to show you how to install and configure Code Igniter with a REST web server. So assume we're logged onto the creative server, we can see that we're in the home folder, and at the moment we don't have a web root folder. So now we have a public HTML folder, we navigate into that, <clears throat> and we're now in the public HTML folder. So now what we're going to do, we're going to create a special folder for our web service. And we're now going to download the Code Igniter installation files. So wget and there's the URL to download our zip file. If I list the contents again, you can see I have a zip file. I'll go to unzip the file. And if I list again, you can see I have a whole series of folders, including a Mac OS 10 folder, which I don't need. So, uh, so RM minus RF, which means it will delete all the contents as well. Underscore, underscore. And you can see now all the files are there. Now I'm going to use the tree command to check the folder structures in place, in the right place. I use the D flag to list directories, and you can see all the folders and fo that have been added to our directory. So now we should be able to test that Code Igniter install, but we're going to remove the original zip file just to keep things nice and tidy. So now, I choose the web service folder in my URL, and as you can see, <coughs> I've got the Code Igniter site up and working. So my next job is to configure Code Igniter itself. So I'm going to change directory to the application. Then change directory to the config. And you can see here's a whole series of configuration files. The one I want to change is config.php. So I fire it up in the nano editor. And if we scroll down, we need to change our base URL. And you see I left a space in there for you to put your own username. Obviously without the curly braces. Control O <coughs> to save, Control X is to quit. <coughs> and that's now configured. Our next job is to go up a folder and change directory to the controllers. And as you can see, there's a few test controllers in there to get started. We're going to create our own. And we're going to call ours. In fact, there's already one there for us. And as you can see, there's a whole series of functions in here, which we're going to be using at another time. So, control X. And what I'm going to do is create a new file. I'll call us hello.php. And I'll put the PHP tags in first. And I'm going to include Libraries Let 
my app con uh, rest controller PHP. Create our new class, which is hello with a capital L this time. <coughs> extends our base class. And I'll create a simple function in here to test things. And we finish with underscore get because we're going to use the get method. And we're going to create our first web service. Pass our data back and a, a message, a response code that says everything's worked out. So I control O to save, control X to exit. And now we're going to test this by typing in the URL, which is index.php, the name of our class. And as you can see, it's pulled out the data that we've added to the web service. I'm going to take this URL, I'm going to go into apig.com, the console, choose the other API, and I'm going to paste that. And send. And as you can see, the request includes the URL, the protocol to use, and the host. The response contains status 200, which is our response code, and the data in JSON format. Well now, final job is we're going to change the output to XML. So, we're in the controllers folder, so we need to go up a level. We need to go into the configuration folder, and there we are. And we need to open the rest.php file. And we're going to change the default format from JSON to XML. Control O to save, Control X, and now when we send the same request, we get XML data returned. If we want to change the format on the fly, we put slash format and specify a different format. And we're back to JSON again.